This is a digital scanner camera made from an Epson V37 flatbed scanner I designed after being inspired by a video from Ryan Kojima about a scanner camera that he built many years ago. You can find the link to the video in the description. It was supposedly capable of taking images with a resolution of up to 514 megapixels and he also praised its dynamic range and color accuracy. Seeing the amazing pictures he took, I was convinced that it would be worth a try. This camera design is hard to replicate, since it contains many metal parts. It is also quite big compared to a normal camera, so there were improvements to be made, while hopefully keeping the amazing image quality. In case you didn't watch Ryan's video, I will explain to you shortly what a scanner camera is. A scanner camera essentially works just like a scanner with a linear CCD sensor, where the linear sensor is moved along an axis to cover an area. In the process, the sensor takes a picture for every line of the final image. Therefore, a linear CCD sensor behaves like a much larger area CCD sensor while being very inexpensive. The downside of a linear CCD sensor is that it takes a lot longer to take a picture and that the subject will distort if it's moving during the process. A major design goal for my scanner camera was to cut the cost to a minimum. As a result, I did not use an expensive 645 medium format lens as required by the sensor size, but only cheap old projector lenses, which I could find reliably online for under 40 euros. That of course comes to the cost of sharpness. A used scanner itself shouldn't cost you more than 40 as well, since the Epson V37 in my design was released at an MSRP of $90 in 2012, I would expect a build of the camera to cost less than 150 euros provided you have a 3D printer. However, my design is not completely finished and therefore troublesome to replicate in its current form. So what about the image quality? I'm happy to report that the cheap projector lenses still manage to deliver some sharpness. If you don't stop the projector lens down, it renders a crazy bokeh, which is annoying when trying to focus. I took these pictures with the 1200 dpi setting in the software, which results in quite large 143 megapixel images. Although the scanner can capture over 600 megapixels with the native software, a better lens would absolutely be necessary for that. The camera also has great color depth in theory thanks to the 48 bits per channel. It is not perfect though, besides the trouble with moving objects, it also struggles in poorly lit scenarios as it's evident from the noise in the shadows. Taking pictures outside works fine if the projector lens is stopped down. However, you need an infrared filter if you don't enjoy these brown plants. I took this picture before adding ISO and aperture control. The camera will do funny things if those parameters aren't controlled correctly. This is my largest picture yet. With its 489 megapixels, it satisfies my resolution claim in the thumbnail of this video. But again, the lens and my sloppy mechanics don't quite manage to deliver the full experience. If you wonder what these vertical lines are, the scanner camera controls the exposure for every line separately. Which might also be the reason for the amazing dynamic range in this shot. Since these lines usually represent lights from cars and other things moving through the frame, I try to recover these distorted objects by distorting them back, which at this resolution produced interesting results. Considering the many lines in this image, you can imagine how much fun it is to recover all of them and see what's hiding there. I myself walked through the frame three times. There's also a bus somewhere if you can spot it. I hope you found this project interesting. The 3D files of the unfinished prototype can be found in the video description. Thanks for watching the video.